So, um, hi everyone. Um, nice to meet you all. Uh, thanks for joining this talk and um, skipping the others. I know there are some other good talks going on um, concurrently. Uh, so, yeah, I'm Maddie uh, uh, from Reconfigure. Um, today I'll be talking about um, um, hardware accelerated simulators basically, and uh, using Go for this purpose, uh, and using Go for uh, implementing uh, hardware accelerated uh, simulators. Of course, um, there are, um, I'll, be, uh, I'll, I'll be also introducing um, Reconfigure's tooling uh, that um, is the company we uh, started, uh, it's based in Manchester, 2016-ish, uh, 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 started. Um, and uh, so, a little bit about myself. Uh, um, I'm, I'm with computer architecture background, and uh, I do a lot of uh, computer uh, architecture uh, design and um, understanding like how the computers work, and. Um, and that's why one of the major reasons why this um, um, FPGAs and uh, acceleration and FPGA acceleration come, come to my um, attention at some point. Uh, so uh, currently, yeah. So uh, after my studies at University of Manchester, um, co-founded this uh, company uh, startup, Reconfigure.io. Uh, we've been looking at um, uh, Go acceleration. Uh, in hardware and uh, transforming Go uh, programs uh, into um, hardware blocks, basically, uh, and uh, running them uh, in the clouds, uh, giving them, uh, you know, uh, a scalability and uh, elasticity uh, uh, power, basically. And um, currently, I'm looking at yeah, service acceleration in the clouds. Um, and you can find me on Twitter as well. So, the um, uh, question is, uh, yeah, uh, what, why do we do simulations? Uh, do you uh, have uh, some idea like uh, why large scale simulations are necessary? Any, any answers, any, any ideas? Designing a city? Designing a uh, modeling, uh, yeah, modeling in large scale system, basically. Cities could be, yeah, exactly. Uh, or um, one of the examples is, like, a biggest example, like, simulator is li large uh, hydrogen collider uh, based in Switzerland. Uh, or um, is, like, the examples that are kind of simulators that they're uh, implementing uh, an environment that is not accessible to us. And uh, also, uh, takes time, long time, to understand the behavior and uh, discovering the phenomena in, 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 in this um, uh, interactions of uh, atoms uh, and exactly understanding like um, how the system works and um, um, and uh, understanding different aspects of it. Um, sometimes uh, the actual things like building the uh, actual environment uh, like we can't get back to a big bang of course but uh, but but at some point like uh, it's emulating the environment and like uh, uh, building that and uh, like for several studies there's another uh, project uh, spinnaker which is going on um, uh, is it still ongoing project in Manchester my professor uh, Steve Ferber is still working on it uh, basically, it's a simulation of uh, brain using uh, hardware. And uh, the way I see this uh, simulator is it's basically uh, there's a model. There are neurons that are modeled. And uh, the way I see them is like, um, like if I want to implement them and uh, simulate, uh, model it in, in Go, I would see them as, uh, you know, goofers that they uh, uh, they are doing some processes, uh, collecting data from uh, different channels and uh, processing it, crunching uh, data, and um, spiking 
uh, uh, to other uh, goofers. And uh, there, there are going to be millions of them, of course, because this project is, has like um, something around one, uh, one million ARM cores that is uh, emulating how brain works and it's used for um, brain study and uh, understanding disease, how neurons interact, uh, how they are, you know, um, how mm, uh, disease affect the other cortexes, parts of the brain and, and so on and so on. Uh, so this is a uh, list I came up with. It's like the first accessibility, of course, costs and uh, time uh, for actually building uh, things. We, that's why uh, we consider using simulators. Um, safety and, of course, uh, scale. Sometimes we have, uh, yeah, scalability uh, is another major issue in real world systems, for example, uh, now, nowadays are called warehouse uh, scale computers that uh, they're made of uh, millions of um, processors that they communicate and they have their own memory systems and um, for performance analysis what you need to do is basically uh, computer architects go and analyze the, um, the, the system um, uh, like use simulators in, uh, to, to play with the, tune the, you know, uh, different parameters and memories, uh, interconnects, topologies, and um, after uh, coming up with uh, a, a solid um, uh, implementation, a solid, a solid idea of uh, what um, this uh, large scale uh, system could, you know, um, uh, could behave and you know uh, how much performance they could get out of it. Uh, they get the budget and build it real uh, computer system. So yeah, um, simulators are uh, important uh, and uh, very um, useful to have them. Uh, on the other hand, okay, so we have uh, simulators that are software based and they're, um, which are slow. Why? Because running at uh, kilohertz uh, frequency. Uh, why? Uh, because uh, in software there's um, a lot of interactions going on between these processes and uh, they've got to be uh, you know, synchronized at some point and uh, the synchronization is one of the, uh, because of you know, uh, the interaction between the components, this uh, synchronization becomes expensive. And, um, and so that was more, one of the reasons why people moved toward uh, hardware, um, uh, uh, hardware accelerated, FPGA accelerated simulators, uh, because they are capable of running uh, processes actually, the way actually they are with allocated memories to them with, uh, and communicating occasionally whenever they need to uh, interact and uh, actual concurrency going on when you have processes actually implemented in hardware, uh, they have their own distributed memory uh, model and, uh, and the runtime uh, scheduling uh, imposed by operating system doesn't get on the way. So, uh, yeah, FPGA accelerated simulators uh, has become uh, very, very trendy. Um, and um, in, this, in this talk, I would like to uh, show you a, a, a prototype that basically is a simulation of a computer system that um, goes on, uh, you know, um, onto uh, FPGAs, uh, since onto FPGAs, ball down. And um, so, the, uh, as, as I said, uh, on the software side, of course, there are some uh, main, major reasons why uh, it makes the software uh, slow, uh, particularly software-based simulations where there are loads of processes um, are running uh, concurrently, um, accessing memory, but there is, uh, one memory system that uh, gets lots of accesses 
uh, has to be multiplexed, uh, and uh, and because of this, lots of uh, synchronization uh, points, mm, performance uh, degrades, um, and usually, as I said, uh, in large scale systems uh, like very house scale um, model systems, uh, there are loads of parameters, of course, uh, to uh, be played with. And they are, um, it makes them, uh, this, this too much detail makes the processes heavy. And uh, when they're running on software, they become uh, slow. Uh, one thing that people, uh, like um, using, yeah, one of the major benefits of hardware is, is when you have uh, resources allocated uh, individually for the you know, your processes, uh, they have their own memory, of course, uh, and when they're running in concurrent manner, uh, they have their own uh, resources, no matter how much detail uh, you have, uh, they, they get their own resources as long as you know, pro uh, they, they receive the uh, resource you, get, uh, you provide, basically, in the hardware. Uh, so uh, there's another, another important factor here, uh, which is uh, cycle accuracy. So in simulators and uh, computer systems, when we're simulating them, uh, cycle accuracy is one of the important factors. Um, cycle, uh, we expect them to be cycle exact, uh, to extract um, uh, exact numbers, uh, performance traces that we want from the software, um, uh, from, from the simulator, and so that we could you know, mo uh, understand the uh, um, uh, interactions and uh, get more realistic performance numbers. On the other hand, um, um, how do we uh, um, model hardware uh, systems? Uh, usually, uh, we have uh, we have to have uh, a notion of concurrency in the language. Uh, like there are loads of uh, other languages, of course, uh, for uh, for uh, implementing uh, models like this in, in hardware, uh, including System C, uh, which are uh, much lower level than uh, what Go provides. Uh, and uh, and uh, implicit notation of time um, for sake of accuracy, cycle accuracy. Um, on the other hand, yeah, we have uh, FPGA accelerated uh, simulators as one of the uh, potential candidates that they uh, give us bare access to uh, bare, bare metal access to hardware and uh, zero time runtime overhead. Of course, when we have. Uh, everything boiled down to uh, into hardware. Um, how many of you are familiar with uh, FPGAs? Right. Um, great. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, introduce yeah uh, what FPGAs are basically, and uh, they're known as field programmable arrays, and uh, we usually have. Um, uh, every one of these tiny blocks, uh, the fine grain blocks, uh, they they are um, connectable uh, at, uh, while you you program them basically, and this uh, gives us flexibility. But of course, there are costs associated with it. But uh, these uh, blocks, they are uh, logic gates uh, that they are known as logic gates. And uh, they could be, uh, you know, um, um, memory blocks that um, we could, you know, chain them together and build uh, uh, big memory blocks and distribute them across the, the chip. Uh, so that, uh, unlike uh, CPUs, we don't have a central memory system or something that uh, we can't do much about it. It's, it's there and we, we have some channels to, you know, read data from uh, this way, uh, every think, think this way, that you know, uh, every one of these goofers that gets um, implemented and a um, couple of those blocks connected to each other, they, they have their own memory locally. Uh, so it, it gives some locality, provides some locality, of course. And um, this, this flexibility requires um, some uh, proper, like, uh, there, there are usually 2.5 million of them um, in, in uh, data center scale uh, FPGAs that, for example, Amazon is providing. 
uh, and um, and they are uh, sort of um, uh, yeah. So there are loads of them. Uh, many of these uh, fine grain uh, blocks that need to be you know connected uh, and uh, configured basically. And uh, this configuration require, uh, takes takes a lot of time. Um, and uh, has to be done using proper tooling. Uh, there are uh, high-level synthesis tools, they call it, uh, that um, um, uh, one of them is uh, what Xilinx is providing. Uh, is called um, uh, um, uh, Xilinx uh, Vivado tools and SDXL and, and etc. That these tool chains basically uh, take high-level language and uh, transform it to hardware uh, language, which next is used to uh, uh, program these, uh, this, this kind of logic. Um, so uh, yeah, um, FPGAs are uh, flexible, as I said. Um, we have, uh, talking about simulators, um, so far, uh, we've done uh, many different research projects uh, within, within the company. Uh, most of them are uh, uh, like simulation, uh, sim uh, FPGA access simulators are like just one of them. And uh, using reconfigures tooling, uh, which under the hood uses uh, Xilinx synthesizer uh, for uh, transformation. Um, it's uh, basically what it does, uh, it takes uh, high-level code and you know transform it to um, um, hardware code, basically. Um, this transformation is known as uh, direct mapping, and uh, when it comes to simulators, where you have um, blocks that are very complicated, for example, um, like multi-port memory systems. In this kind of uh, uh, so for, for implementing these kind of systems uh, and modeling them, uh, we need uh, time functionality decoupling in this kind of uh, simulators that we have. And uh, this is something that uh, I'm going to uh, dig in uh, later if there's more time. Um, so uh, using Go for, uh, um, for this purpose, implementing uh, FPG accelerator simulators is something that uh, not many people have looked into. Um, is, um, it's, it's interesting because um, the way, that's the way hardware usually is described uh, as a person with uh, hardware background. The way I see it is uh, we have different um, processes in hardware that they are uh, running concurrently, and uh, they, they communicate uh, through channels. And we have these semantics in, in Go uh, as built-in semantics. And uh, this is very interesting that uh, this is a language that provides this and um, um, makes it um, a good choice for uh, this purpose. Using Go for describing the model and using reconfigures tooling for transforming Go blocks to hardware and then um, you know run them on FPGAs. Uh, sorry. Um, and next is if your model is not uh, you know doesn't fit on one single FPGA, there is a scalability chance when you are deploying to clouds. Um, FPGAs in the cloud, uh, provided by AWS F1, for example. Um, so um, I'm going to, yeah, so the framework is called GoPro. Um, that's the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the right side. Um, it shows a um, simple implementation of a processor. Uh, a processor is uh, a pipeline processor, basically. Uh, that's the, um, the stages it has, there are like fetch, um, decode, execute with every, you know, pipeline uh, processor, um, every processor that we basically have in our phones, uh, laptops. Um, uh, so what I'm doing there is uh, spawning a Go routine per each of these, uh, you know, um, 
uh, pipeline stages, which uh, the, the way I see them is as um, um, the way I see them is as uh, separate services. And uh, what I do is just to pass them channels and uh, let them synchronize whenever they, they need, whenever data is available. So it basically, as simple as that, uh, establishes the uh, pipeline and, um, and uh, the, so, so the first one, which is uh, go from uh, like memory, like reading the instructions, uh, the next one is doing the, um, sorry, uh, yeah, um, one of those fetch, uh, the top one is memory, uh, that is the, the process that is taking care of the memory, it read writes. Uh, there's one uh, process that is, uh, is a fetch uh, that um, uh, uh, fetch data from memory, goes, takes instructions, takes in instructions, and um, uh, passes them to, um, the decoder, and decoder uh, takes the instruction, uh, takes the opcode, takes the data bits, and passes them uh, through to the uh, uh, execution unit, and then there's a memory write back, which writes back the executed uh, data, basically. So uh, in this, this model that uh, I'm talking about, um, there are uh, every processor uh, has, you know, uh, this is just single order processes. There are auto order execution uh, models, of course. There are uh, cache coherency or support for operating system. Like, these are not at the, uh, in this implementation. Uh, they're not, like, like for modeling uh, interrupts, for modeling uh, which uh, is, is, they are not supported at this point, but is one of the, um, is, 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 um, early stage project that we're still working on. Um, and the other interesting thing is that uh, when you have the model implemented uh, for further explorations, you could have uh, uh, other uh, implemented models, not necessarily in Go to be plugged in and you know interact with your uh, processor, let's say, um, your, your model. And now uh, the question is, how do we go from uh, this implementation to hardware? Uh, that's going to um, be, uh, yeah, uh, the demo I'll do next. So given the fact that, uh, So uh, supporting multi-processor systems, um, one of the uh, interesting things that Go has is uh, Go Generate. Using Go Generate for uh, implementing uh, multi-core systems, that uh, they are like uh, the nodes that I just showed you is uh, one of those uh, microprocessors, and they have their own memory. Let's say. And uh, there are channels associated to them. They're connected to some uh, rotor network. And uh, they are communicating, these old processes are communicating um, in this uh, network on chip, which is called. And uh, they are also, and yeah, there is, um, there, there is a network block. And there is a set of processors and uh, in order to generate that, you don't need to uh, hand code it. Um, I'm using uh, Go Generate in order to produce that the entire framework, uh, which you know, includes uh, rotor implementations and um, processors replicated as much as, as much as you want. So it could build a large scale network. Um, and, um, on the other hand, also, we have the concept of, uh, after building the model, uh, we need a driver. And that driver uh, sits on the host side and the CPU side. And the CPU side is, uh, is, um, communicates with the FPGA. So uh, currently, uh, FPGAs are there as coprocessors, basically. Just uh, there's an FPGA fabric, and there's a CPU fabric next to it, that uh, uh, CPU drives the uh, 
the functions that are running on FPGA, uh, initiates them, activates them, and when they're done with computing, um, you return a signal saying that, yeah, the, uh, the computation done, and uh, the host side uh, code returns signal to the, uh, to the user saying that, okay, the simulation uh, is, is done. So the host side code is, is uh, something that has to be implemented as well. Uh, that's uh, regular Go code with some, uh, you know, uh, hardware level API. Um, so yeah, I think uh, better we switch to demo. Uh, in order to, uh, I don't have my, um, okay. Uh, sorry. Okay, so here we have uh, um, bigger. Um, I'm, I'm going to see. Um, sorry about this. Uh, okay, so we're in, um, in order to make this bigger, uh, I think um, is there a chance to uh, make this uh, bigger? I need to zoom in. There we go. Thanks. But I can't do minus so if I want to. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks so much. So. Uh, So uh, what we have here is um, so this is a bit uh, um, the implementation of the every one of those uh, blocks, uh, like the, uh, the the memory unit. Uh, they are implemented as uh, separate functions. There's a fetch unit uh, that reads uh, from memory. There's a PC implementation program counter, basically, that uh, takes um, instructions, um, reads from memory, and uh, uh, passes them to, pushes into this uh, um, uh, fetch channel. Um, and then there's the code unit that uh, they're single input, single output, basically, uh, um, uh, stages. But of course, um, there's a way to make them, of course, uh, uh, if you want, you know, like several uh, broadcasts way. I mean, uh, it's, also, it's also possible. Um, but uh, yeah, for this implementation, I don't need that. Uh, rotors is, uh, uh, I'm going to show as, as uh, one of the implementations that basically you need multiple uh, porting. Um, execution unit uh, that takes the opcode from every instruction and, and, um, and opcodes uh, are the, you know, uh, um, based on this SSEM ISA, uh, we have uh, several opcodes like um, jump, uh, load negative store and every one of those. Uh, and then we have write back uh, as a final stage. Uh, so um, it just simply returns um, what, uh, 
you know, uh, reads the instruction and just passes it through to uh, write back. It doesn't do much on that. Um, so this is the code that I showed you um, as the processor stages. And this is how the uh, high-level model is literally implemented. Uh, we have, we're spawning, um, you know, go routine per stage. And, uh, and, and this is it. Uh, basically, it's the simplest uh, processor implementation uh, that you probably have seen. Um, next is uh, the bit that um, generating uh, hardware, uh, like the, the network bit. Uh, generating the network is uh, done in, um, Yeah, so the part that uh, generates the network is um, written in uh, Go itself as well. Uh, that uh, has uh, two parts, the, the processor part and the network part. And uh, it takes the uh, indexes that I'm going to show you and also uh, the rotor function, processor function, and uh, there's a uh, there, th that, that's a range uh, for loop that basically uh, instantiates processors as much as much as we want, uh, which is um, you know uh, 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 specified in the YAML file uh, in the project, and there is a network bit that is uh, again instantiation of the rotors. So, um, in the in the project, we have uh, so so the part that uh, so uh, in this directory we have the um, processor implementation, individual processors, but how to scale them and how to use uh, Go generate in order to um, you know generate the instantiate the network, and then from the network we're, we're going to you know uh, use Rico tooling, reconfigure tooling uh, in order to. Uh, um, get it on uh, FPGAs basically. So in the network directory, we, we have, um, uh, let me remove uh, main. Okay. Uh, so the main is going to be uh, generated. Um, so what we have in uh, input file, it takes two files, is input file and also Rico file uh, basically. Uh, so the input file is, uh, there are, uh, Sim, like the, the processor goes in there, and the, the rotor implementations uh, goes and goes in there, and there are serializers and deserializers necessary. Why? Because uh, for interaction between the host side, there's the driver and the FPGA. Uh, there is um, in this in this uh, in this model, uh, it's basically is a shared memory model that they are sharing one single channel, uh, and that's why there is uh, serialization and deserialization needed at this point. Um, so in um, configuration file, we have uh, specified two um, functions, processor and the rotor. Um, and uh, they're they are just, you know, um, and the number four uh, for processors, like four uh, processor instantiation. Uh, we want a two-in-two two, uh, mesh network, basically. Um, what happens next is um, um, so we have a network generated, and this network is with uh, this is the top file that is that is the uh, magical, you know, main recognizable by recall tooling um, is the keyword. Uh, there is, there are interface links generated uh, for interacting with the memory, the shared memory that I talked about, uh, which in, uh, like these, uh, these links uh, interact with the host uh, for uh, uh, passing tokens and reading uh, uh, data. There is, uh, <coughs> uh, these are, all nicely documented in uh, reconfigures uh, documents, of course. Um, I'll, I'll show you next. Um, there's a one go routine that um, 
reads from input channel uh, and reads data for every one of the processors, fills their uh, memory units. Um, and then we have uh, some form of uh, in the serialized way, of course. Um, if the instructions are um, like 64-bit um, uh, uh, and your, your channel width is 32, there has to be some, uh, uh, you know, uh, deserialization should go on, like um, two of two 32 bits sit together and uh, form 64 bits for one single instruction, basically. Um, next is the data channels that are generated, and these data channels are the communication medium between processor and rotors. And the rotors, uh, there are four um, channels uh, for uh, interaction between the rotors. Uh, there's a processor part that instantiates four processors uh, with their uh, channel for communication with memory. And there's a network part which is like four, four rotors instantiated basically. And in the end we have um, some way to read the data out of the uh, FPGA instance. Uh, so I'll, I'll go quickly. Um, Okay, so, uh, yeah, uh, I think, okay, so, so we have to have a main block, I think. Okay, so uh, one of the toolings we have uh, is Rico. Rico is, um, provides, um, as a tooling provided by Reconfigure, um, um, it provides uh, s several other uh, interesting uh, tooling for uh, checking your code and to make sure that uh, the generated uh, um, uh, Go code is uh, compatible with uh, the uh, with, with our compiler, basically, um, because um, there are like if you have. Uh, system calls or things like this, they're not actually yet supported. Um, these are, you know, runtime stuff that um, we don't uh, we don't support at this point. Uh, Rico check um, the main file generated. Okay, so uh, we have a couple of uh, functions that were in the input file. Uh, they're missing. Sorry. Um, so. Right, so checking the uh, main file, uh, successful. So uh, what's next is uh, do um, uh, simulation run. So b b before showing the simulation part, uh, actually uh, there is the The CMD file that is the the code for the driver, and uh, so as I said, there's a model part. It's like there are two main files. One main file uh, contains the uh, the model, uh, which has um, uh, the, the the you know processors, the rotors instantiated, and there is another file which is a uh, another main main file is Citizen's uh, CMD uh, directory, and that one is the uh, driver, uh, actual driver, and uh, that code is. Um, using uh, a C, um, a CXL uh, API in order to uh, instantiate the kernel uh, and basically um, pass the arguments that the, uh, the, uh, the kernel, I, we see that as a kernel basically, uh, the, the um, processor router uh, impl uh, implementation and passing the arguments to it and uh, next is running the kernel and um, 
and expecting results from it, basically. Um, so that's the um, um, yeah, driver code, which is in Go as well. Um, and uh, what we have next, okay. Because in run uh, the test. Um, what was happening next is basically uh, running the simulation. Uh, is waiting for the uh, bad job to start and uh, running the uh, two into uh, network, uh, uh, simulating it basically. And uh, I could just um, terminate that for now. It, it's running background, of course, if you have a recall sim list. Um, you could see the simulation running. And what we have uh, is a set of uh, other tooling here. Um, there is a simulation, and then next we have uh, also a build option and uh, also deploy. I'm going to skip the uh, last slide. So it's um, for deploying into, into the clouds, the, your model with the, uh, the, the driver code in order to deploy into the cloud, uh, that's, that's the uh, command for it. And uh, you will have, yeah, basically, um, uh, you're telling me I'm running out of time, I guess, or not. I'm good. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, recall sim uh, list. Just to show us. Yeah, this one is still cute, so. Um, so, so going, going back to uh, the slides. Okay. Um, So we generated a, a network, uh, the host side code that I showed you, and then using recall tooling, you basically have, uh, you, you could just you know, deploy into uh, FPGA-based clouds, um, in, 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 our, in, in this case, uh, AWS F1, and um, because if, um, if your model is too big, that doesn't fit in one single FPGA, and you wanna have like multiple of them, uh, usually, you know, uh, is, is, is the best idea is to, you know, go for a cloud solution. Uh, so that recall deploy uh, takes care of uh, that for you. Um, we have, uh, of course, the, the model that I showed you is, is a very simplified uh, system. There are uh, several other, uh, you know, uh, units to be included and um, um, like, like the part with uh, packet management uh, and, and the, and the uh, interaction between, between the, uh, you know, uh, there has to be IPs for uh, Ethernet, you know, uh, communication between the FPGAs, for example, has to be included. And uh, that's something that's not uh, automated in this, in, the, in this example that I'll show you. Uh, we have a very well documented uh, uh, stuff that are just, you know, Describing uh, the, the entire flow with several examples that uh, you could you know simply uh, go and check yourself, and um, I'll be more than uh, yeah happy to uh, take further questions. Thanks. <laughs>